Good morning, everyone. My name is Pavel Dubovsky. We start the fourth mathematical Olympiad at Stevens Institute of Technology. I am happy to see many guests. I am happy to see many high schoolers. All your children will have 15 problems. Uh, some problems are simple, other problems are more complicated. So the difficulty level increases from 1 through 15. And some problems are difficult because we need to single out winners. And the winning ceremony, the award ceremony, will be held in three weeks. And the winners will be notified, of course. What's important is that your parents may take campus tours. And the campus tours guides will be located in the atrium of the Babio Center, located across the road. So, and right now I'd like to uh, give word to the president of the Stevens Institute of Technology, Dr. Farwardin. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Before uh, Dr. Dubovsky sits down, he just did, I was going to ask you to please join me in giving him a huge round of applause. Thank you very much for all this work. I also wanted to take this opportunity to thank all of our colleagues, uh, Chair of the Math Department, Dean of Engineering and Science, many, many uh, staff members and students who are volunteering to make this event possible. This has taken an enormous amount of effort. But after having done that, I want to say good morning, and I want to welcome you to the fourth annual Stevens Math uh, Olympiad. Uh, I am delighted that we have selected such a beautiful day. The sun is out. The temperature is beautiful. Um, I invite you to take a few minutes after, uh, um, after the um, exams uh, toward the campus and look at the majestic view of uh, the New York skyline. Um, as mentioned, I'm Nari Marfavardin, I'm the president of the, of the university, and uh, like many of you, I love mathematics. I love math for its precision, I love math for its discipline, and I love math for its uh, elegance. Uh, I should tell you, my first job, which uh, occurred 53 years ago, was as a math tutor. 53 years ago, and this lady is giving me this funny look, you're trying to compute my age, is that it? <laughs> I will tell you, uh, I'll be 85, but not anytime soon. <laughs> um, I was nine years old when I started uh, as a math tutor. I was asked by my teacher to tutor a classmate who was actually struggling in math. At that time, I discovered uh, my love for mathematics and, and also discovered my love for teaching. And uh, that put me on a course to um, become a student of electrical engineering, then a faculty member of electrical engineering, uh, then a department chair and uh, academic administrator. Uh, and my early love of mathematics uh, was the seed for what, uh, for me, uh, has been uh, a wonderfully st stimulating and rewarding career that has enabled me to touch the lives of uh, literally thousands of students, launch two technology businesses, and now um, I'm fortunate to have, uh, I think, the best job on the face of the planet as president of Stevens Institute of Technology. I am uh, extremely pleased that you're able to join us, and I'm very proud of the students who are participating in this uh, Olympiad and of the parents, uh, in some cases grandparents or guardians, who are encouraging the students to uh, develop their, their math skills. You're among the nearly 540 students who are ranging from third to 12th grade who have come here today to solve challenging and stimulating math problems. Whether you're here for the first time or you're a returning champion, you know whether you want to study mathematics in college or you're still undecided about the field of study, whether you're frequently participating in extracurricular mathematics activities or not, we are thrilled that you're here today and hope that you will have great fun working on today's problems. <clears throat> And I must make a little confession to you myself. I do math problems for fun myself. This is true. In fact, if you come to my office today, you will see I have a little whiteboard in my office. 
And on the whiteboard, I have different uh, words and different pictures related to my real day job, uh, you know, strategic vision for the university, work with my uh, uh, colleagues in the university. But I also have a few things related to the latest math puzzle that I'm struggling to solve. Um, that's what I do for fun and for entertainment. I, I'm sure there are some people in this audience and among the students who are taking the test right now uh, who are like me, and I think it's perfectly fine to be a mathematician and to be a nerd. I think nerds are ruling the world these days. I am honored and delighted to introduce our keynote speaker today, an individual who's not only a lifelong math mathematics enthusiast, but also who won a silver medal for the United States in the 27th International Mathematics Olympiad, Mr. John Over Overdeck. John Overdeck earned a bachelor's degree in mathematics and a master's degree in statistics, both from Stanford University. Mr. Overdeck is the co-founder and co-chairman of Two Sigma Investments, a company that uses a variety of technological methods for its trading strategies. By the way, only a good mathematician can do that. Previously, he served as vice president and technical assistant to the CEO at Amazon. In 2011, he and his wife, Laura, established the Overdeck Family Foundation, an organization that supports science, technology, engineering, and mathematics education initiatives and research. Mr. Overdeck currently serves on the board of directors of the Hamilton Insurance Group and the board of the Robin Hood Foundation, the Institute for Advanced Study, and he's also chair of the National Museum of Mathematics. Um, in 2017, he was honored by the Academy of Achievement for being a pioneer in technology and investment management. I ask you to please join me in giving a loud and enthusiastic welcome to Mr. Ovedek. John. <clears throat> Thank you, President Farvadin. Uh, thank you to uh, Stevens for hosting this amazing event uh, and for inviting me to speak. Although this Math Olympiad is, is technically a competition, uh, I always find most of the joy in such things as something quite different from the chance to bring home a medal. For me, uh, the joy of such competitions is the joy of teasing out treasures that have been hidden uh, cleverly in the problem. So we have to thank our uh, host again for all the effort. I think that the staff here at Stevens, uh, Pavel, uh, are, is responsible for all the questions. So thank you for all the effort putting those together. In my day, I guess I was pretty good at solving contest problems of all sorts. And I even won some of the awards that were mentioned on the US math team. And I did go on to study math. Uh, occasionally, I still get a chance uh, also to look at math problems, and I've, I've even won a couple math contests recently for retired mathletes. But I doubt that I can compete with the best of you uh, students here today. Um, I came up in a very different age from the age in which we are now. Um, I grew up in Maryland uh, during the late 70s, and I would wake up early each morning, first one up, and there wasn't much to do. It was a quiet house, and we had a single black and white television that had only four or five channels. And when I would wake up, the first, I would turn on the TV, and the best thing on, typically, was the farm report. And I would watch the farm report. And there was no internet. So life was kind of slow. And that idleness allowed me to think about different things, to get good at games, uh, solitaire, to play with dice and with coins. Um, I would follow the sports statistics in the newspaper. I knew everything about it. And when it got really slow, I would even call the weather service at two minutes past the hour every hour on the rotary dial phone to get the updated forecast and the updated temperature and to check whether they were correct. <laughs> and I learned to love libraries and to entertain myself with abstract pursuits. And my favorite toys were a vintage stopwatch and an, and an early TI calculator. And I guess. In that age, I was unusual and thus lucky to have such interests and to have parents who would support such interests. And as I look out in the room today, I see two uh, levels of parents that are willing to put their passion into supporting their kids in their interest in mathematics, and that's, that's a wonderful thing. And that's a big change, and that, that, that makes, warms the heart. 
I don't presume to know the stories of the kids today, um, but I know that their life is a little bit different. I know from my own three kids, it's quite different, both in terms of opportunities and distractions. Today, there are resources that I could never have dreamed of. Um, you know, uh, it was mentioned our foundation, we're very much interested in some of these things. My wife has founded an organization called Bedtime Math to help kids get an early start and do math with their parents. But the, the set of opportunities are out there. I think a lot of the kids in this room may know some of them. You know, starting with Khan Academy is a free resource for everybody to learn not just math but a range of subjects. As you get deeper into mathematics, there are things like Art of Problem Solving and Woot. And some of my personal favorites, which we support, um, the, cap, uh, the uh, coach of the US math team currently, Poshen Lo, runs a site called expi.com, E-X-P-I-I.com. And there's a, a website, uh, you, you can go onto YouTube and you can watch videos on mathematics, three blue, one brown. All these things are just fun. And you get onto any one of these things, it'll link you to other ones of them. And there are community groups and comments. There's more out there than you could possibly do, and you guys know, and each thing leads you to something else to do. In addition, there's a whole world of summer opportunities that didn't exist. And we also now, since 2012, have a National Museum of Mathematics on 26th Street in New York City, and I'm proud to announce that all the competitors today will get a free ticket in case you want to visit. So I hope everybody has a good time. So even with all these efforts and opportunities, this country somehow is not generating enough technical people to fill all the opportunities that the economy is creating. Mathematical insights are revolutionizing subjects all the time. We see the Googles and the Facebooks, we see what's happening on Wall Street, but it's also revolutionizing the life sciences, computational chemistry, and top uh, data science employers are not able to find the people in this country um, to fill those roles. You know, my, com my company often fills half of its most quantitative positions with people who didn't go to high school in this country. I know I'm preaching to the choir a bit, but why aren't there more kids out there pursuing the joy in math? Um, I should also note that it's heartening to see a number of young women here in the room today, including my daughter, I'm very proud that she's here, but there's still nowhere nearly enough um, girls that are pursuing these things. So why is it? I mean, that, that would be a subject for a, a whole talk in itself, and I'll leave that to contemplate. But one thing I do know is that modern American life is filled with distractions at every corner. Compared to the Spartan information diet that I grew up on, today's inf information world is all you can eat. M much of it is totally empty calories, or at worst, even harmful. So Snapchat streaks, Instagram, Xbox, Fortnite, Survive.io, Rip Grumpy Cat, Happy 10th Anniversary Minecraft, insert meme here. Whether we, your parents, accept it or not, each of the students in this room is coming of age. And students, if you haven't figured this out already, you will choose what you consume both as food and as media. You will pick your own menu. And I will argue here that with media, as with food, in the end, more often than not, you are what you eat. Whatever you choose to pursue, my message is pick wisely what you put into your head because your choices will help color your future. Relatedly, with media as with food, don't go, just go overeating. Turn off your Netflix and your phone. Leave yourself space to think and to explore. Now, nobody's perfect in this regard, and I'm certainly not. You can probably tell from my remarks that I don't have the most refined palate for media or for food. And in the food category, I actually have a particular soft spot with, for donuts. Um, I could ask a lot of questions about donuts. You know, you could ask about their volume or surface area, and we'll leave these for other, another day. Um, but uh, the topic of donuts brings me, I'll, I'll close with a specific math problem. The topic of donuts brings me to a specific math pattern that overjoyed me when I first learned it. When I was in high school, nobody would have known this. And when I was told this, I was shocked. But, you know, maybe a lot of the kids here might know it. So don't yell out the answer when I start the problem. If you know it, just enjoy it. So the question, in a way, is, so how many different ways um, can one construct a, a box of donuts, a dozen donuts, out of three different flavors of donuts. 
Um, let's say that the donuts we have are, ch are glazed donuts, powdered donuts, and chocolate dipped donuts. How many different ways could you make that box of donuts? And I think a lot of people here, if I gave them a paper and pencil, could work it out. But there's quite an elegant way of uh, thinking about that. And since time is short, I will actually tell you. It's probably better to let you work on it, but I'll tell you how, how to figure this out. So I'm going to put you in charge of the customer's order. So the customer says, I want four of each. So, OK, you, you, actually, I'm not going to put you in charge of the customer's order. I'm going to have two people because I want to fill these orders quickly. Your job is in a, there's a box with 14 slots. Your job after you hear the order is to just put two uh, spacer donuts in the box. Uh, I want the spacer donuts in the boxes. I don't want the chocolate getting on the powdered sugar and I don't want the powdered, I want to keep the, the different kinds of donuts separately so they don't, because I'm fussy about my donuts. I want to keep them separate. So, and then the guy next to you or the woman next to you will, will actually fill the box. So does that work? Does it work to just put in the two spacer donuts? I claim that if you put in the two spacer donuts, the person to your side will know how to fill it. Because if we fill it the same way every time, where you put first the glazed donuts, then the powdered donuts, and then the chocolate donuts, each box with the spacer donuts tells the other person exactly how to fill the box. And any box of donuts you can represent, you know, any way of adding up to 12, you can represent by a, a, a single um, way of positioning the spacer donuts. So the, the, the problem of, of packing the, how many ways to pack the boxes is actually the same as the problem of how many ways you can put two spacer donuts in 14 slots, which is the same as, you know, how many uh, pairs of friends uh, can, uh, how many handshakes could you, construct between a group of 14 people, which I think most of the competitors here know is 14 choose 2, 14 times 13 dividing by 2 because you, you've double counted them, which is 91. So anyhow, I was overjoyed when I learned that. So the moral of the story is even when you're consuming junk like donuts, there can still be math. I'd better let you, the students, get on to today's uh, nutritious and delicious main course, which is the math problems. Thanks again to Stevens for having us, uh, for inviting me. Thanks for listening. And for all the kids, good luck and enjoy the challenge.